things are happening here. And we're trying to communicate that there in Berlin. And a lot of people have been understanding that. And as we are here in El Salvador and we have this great opportunity, uh, it's, it's now Salvadorians, they, we need to take a decision if we want to be like viewers of history, or if we want to be part of it, if we want to be protagonists. And I think that people in Berlin has understood that they need to be protagonists, that we want to be protagonists there. So uh, maybe an invitation for any Salvadorian that is hearing us that we have a great big opportunity happening right now here in El Salvador. So we get to talk about the up and coming uh, Bitcoin hotspot in El Salvador here tonight. I have Gerardo and Evelyn with us who I've actually met a couple times before and I didn't put two and two together before the, the interview. And I had heard about everything that was happening in Berlin. And obviously I had been to La Paria with, with you, Evelyn, and you guys both came out to, to Punta Mongo for the inauguration of the community center there. And so when you showed up today, I was like, wait, I know these people. <laughs> so that's always, uh, that's always fun. So I keep, hearing stuff about Berlin, like it is the, the hot spot that, you know, people are excited about. There's been a number of uh, expat Bitcoiners that, that have started to move there, but it also seems like there's just this organic endemic movement starting with, within the, the community. So we'll dive into kind of the history of that, but first, let people know a little bit about you guys, how you how you met. Uh, I guess you guys met during COVID, but then uh, how you were introduced to Bitcoin and and what drew you to to move make the move down to Berlin. Well, thank you, thank you for having us. Thank you. We're really excited to be here. So yeah, now Berlin is moving really fast. Actually, we are surprised how things are going there. It's uh, we are just amazed what, what's happening there. And we're really bad at social media. That's why you didn't put a, the two of us together because we don't put our faces that much well, there. Well, now that yeah. I think about it, I, I did see your faces when you guys were selling the different things, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm old, so you know, it takes me a little while, so. <laughs> so yeah, no, we, like you said, we met uh, during COVID. And- um, Your COVID couple. COVID couple, yes, exactly, <laughs> COVID couple. And yeah, pretty much what we do or what we what we still do is to do um, remote work. Freelancers are working for random companies in the United States, and we were doing that during COVID. Uh, like, like what type? What type of work? Uh, first, we started working in call centers. Then we learned how to do freelance work, like uh, um, property management companies working, fixing things for people living in the United States, uh, like managing uh, properties, uh, buildings, you know, residential buildings, and people call like us. Like all remote stuff? Yeah, re remote okay. stuff. So yeah, connecting like, if something needs to be repaired. Yeah, okay. so we call the uh, electrician or we call the, like, the plumber and we send it over to to people so that once things fixed and well. In, in the US or here? From here to the to the U.S. So it's, yeah. it's properties in the U.S. Yeah. Yes, okay. You are the landlord yeah, okay. of the properties, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. remotely. Okay. So yeah. Interesting. And uh, we were doing that for like 10, 12 hours a day. Um, and we just got tired of doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So yeah, we, we, we got bored. So we started to attending Bitcoin uh, meetups, uh, starting doing Bitcoin stuff uh, for the past couple of years, we have seen how El Salvador is changing and the things are happening here and we just wanted to be part of it. And we knew that Bitcoin was a big part of that change that is happening. So, yeah. so, so which one of you became interested in Bitcoin first or did it kind of happen together? It was me. <laughs> that was you. Only, yeah. All right. Yeah, it was me. Uh, it was back on, on 2018, actually, uh, but I didn't get 
like too much into Bitcoin. It was until um, 2020, basically. And then um, Bitcoin law happened. And after that, we started like attending to the to the meetups. I started like studying Bitcoin to to actually understand what was Bitcoin. And then I started to, you know, like where, how are you? Were you reading books or were you listening to podcasts? I was or? listening to uh, some podcasts. I don't remember the names because I was just like Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> just searching about Bitcoin, then uh, YouTube also, and then started to, to read some um, articles. And that's how I started. Then I started like to to talk about Bitcoin, you know. And Did you start was, pushing it on Gerardo? Yes, you were like, and I was like annoying him, like, hey, take a look at this <laughs> and, and yeah. sending him links and blah, blah, blah. And then within time, within a couple of months, um, he yeah. became like interested and we started to to attend the meetups together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah actually, I, I paid more attention when Nayib made it a thing here in El Salvador. Uh, that's when I started to. Right, so this this is this is this is something serious, yeah. you know. She's we, not crazy, sir. Yes, yeah, she, she's not crazy. <laughs> I I understand her now. So yeah, now and and after that, uh, there was people getting together, gathering, talking about Bitcoin, and that's how we started. And we soon found ourselves doing Bitcoin stuff, and we liked that, and that's how we everything started. And that's how we started in Bitcoin. And you guys were. Were you guys both working with Me Premier Bitcoin, and how did that? Yeah, we start? we started going to Me Premier Bitcoin meetups, and as we were tired of doing what we were doing, we started to collaborate with them. And then one thing uh, takes us to another, and soon we found ourselves giving Bitcoin classes, collaborating with them. Then we were having so you, like you were the ones teaching the classes or leading. Yes, them. well, at the beginning it was more like different collaborations, like doing. A flyer or something like that. Then we yes, we started to do uh, Bitcoin classes, and then we got like part time jobs, and we were giving like classes like everywhere, like in San Salvador, and then San Miguel, uh, Usulutan, Berlin, La Alegría, Pirraya. La Piraya, yeah, like everywhere. And then we, well, we we liked what we were doing, so we just quit our our, our jobs and started doing that full-time, uh, collaborating full-time with them. And well, we, we collaborated with them like how much, seven, eight months? Yeah, it was with them for about a year. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah so she started before me. And, and yeah, that's how we started. Then we, like as we were giving classes, everywhere in El Salvador, we were like realizing how the adoption was in El Salvador. And well, we just stay at Berlin. Yeah. So I, why why Berlin? Like, what was? I mean, uh, there there was not much uh, places in El Salvador that that were there was like adoption where people could come and, and spend sets. So as we were like giving classes, and we were thinking like, there's no other place in El Salvador other than El Sante. So we started like to. To trying to find a, what would be a good place to, you know, to start like a circular economy, because we like that idea. Uh -huh. So we started to to look at the the places of where where we were going, and we thought, I mean, once we got to Berlin, we we just found out that that was the place. It had like a good combination of uh, people, small town, touristic place. And people was like um, really open to learn about Bitcoin. Yeah. And had you guys spent time in Berlin before, or was it just like a teaching a class that brought you up there? Or yeah, we were. Evelyn was there before. She since the first time she she was there in Berlin. She I remember she calling me, texting me, and like I want to live here. We were living in San Salvador back then, and I didn't pay that much attention uh, when she she was saying that. We ended up living in San Miguel for like three months because um, when we were collaborating with Premier Bitcoin, we were told that the action was going to take place in the eastern side of the country. We actually didn't realize it was going to be in Usulutan mostly. 
So we end up like driving like an hour and a half, two hours every time that we were going to <laughs> to Berlin to give classes and in Allegri and all these places. And and, and yes, and for uh, for people who have not uh, spent time in El Salvador, San Miguel is, I think, the hottest place yep. in El Salvador. It's uh, <laughs> one of the hottest. Places. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, we like Berlin. We, we, we like to run from from the from the heat from San Miguel and go to Berlin. We didn't want. To, we were like sad. We were leaving Berlin back to San Miguel. <laughs> so yeah, no. But, but we're getting a lot of that. I remember when we were traveling in, through through the country and we were meeting. Bitcoin is coming from another country. They were like, where do we see the adoption? And it's nice, it's something's nice. We want to see more of the adoption here in El Salvador. We didn't have a place where to take them. Um, and we thought for a while we were thinking there it, it must be a I mean, there must be a better way to create an impact when it comes to the Bitcoin adoption, if that's what we're doing. Like choose a place, choose a city, choose a town. Uh, put our efforts there and start uh, spreading the adoption there. Like make an example, just like El Sante back then. By the time that we were thinking to create a place or, or starting a place, we read your uh, white paper, which is great, really inspiring. We, we got a lot of the ideas from there. And this is nice. We should replicate that. We are the Bitcoin country. How is it that no one else has done the same thing that it was done there? And that's pretty much how the idea came. Oh, I love that. I yeah. love that. So did you have any contacts or did you know people in uh, you just said, hey, we're going to move no. there and, and start from scratch? We were just the newbies there, so we didn't know anybody. And um, we were like giving classes there, but that was it. A couple of hours, then uh, we didn't know actually people. But we started to like going to businesses, talking to people. And people in Berlin, they are really nice. They treat you like your friends from your whole life and, and or like your family. So um, we really like that. So we started to talk to people, onboarding businesses, and, and then that um, like sparkle, the flame to, you know, keep us moving forward with, with this okay. idea, with this crazy idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you guys rented a house there or you're living there, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we've been living there for the past three months now. Okay. But we were like traveling when we were living in San Miguel. We were traveling like twice, even three times the week going to Berlin uh, to do this. Exact, because by that point, we were like full in in, in, in Bitcoin Bitcoin adoption. We, we were like left for our, our, our jobs and we were we were using our, our resources. We were collaborating with, with me from our Bitcoin, but we were using our resources to, to go there and and do this um, onboarding of the businesses. And we're like doing math. How long can we do this, you know? <laughs> until yeah, so and... we were leaving the house around 7, 6.30 in the morning, and we were coming back around 9, 10 p.m. Wow. Because yeah. we had to, you know, make it worth it to yeah. the travel time. So we spent like the whole afternoon talking and talking to people about Bitcoin. Yes. Yeah, no, that, that, that was just the beginning. But then we soon found ourselves working with really amazing people there in Berlin. Because um, back all we had was just the idea of creating a circular economy. And we the, our actions and our mouth trying to convince people <laughs> around. But the, uh, there's, uh, there was a lot of people interested in this idea of trying to create a circular economy. When, as we were talking to people, uh, businesses and, and business owners and entrepreneurs, we saw the energy that there was there. Uh, they were looking for something to change there in Berlin. Berlin is a great city, but still needs a lot of things that can be improved. People is really proud, the people from Berlin is really proud from being from Berlin but they know that there's things from the, the, the city that can be improved. Uh, a lot of businesses, they depend on tourism. And there's this town 10 minutes driving from Berlin, which is Alegria, that is taking most, most of the tourism there in the mountain. So they just knew that they, there was something that needed to be done. And as we were explaining how Bitcoin can change uh, the whole you know, phase of the city, 
they understood it and they start following what we were doing. And soon we, we had a great team working, working there. So, yeah. So is it, is there other people working with you there? Um, is this like an official, like, how is it set up? How is it organized? How is well, it? At this point, that was like five months ago. First, the first business that we were onboarding. Now we have a whole board and people between entrepreneurs, Bitcoiners living there. And we meet every week trying to figure it out how to implement Bitcoin, how to fix some of the issues that Berlin has, because it's not only about Bitcoin. We realized that some, some locals, they will follow us or will, will follow the, the project if we include Berlin in social work there in Berlin, which is important for them. And as they have been around us, they are learning about Bitcoin too. So, so yeah, now, now we have a board, we have, we're, we're, we're trying to be as organized as possible to uh, what we're doing there. Yeah, we, and, sorry. No, uh, go, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I was going to mention that we are around uh, 14, 15 people that it's uh, like uh, conforming these group that it's working towards the adoption, but they, there's a lot more of merchants that they, they um, are also involved, but this, it, it's like a group of 15 people. And basically everybody is it's donating their time because nobody's getting paid. Yeah. Um, so they are basically putting their, their time and efforts towards this, this mission that we have. Oh, that's amazing. Why don't, Andy, why don't we roll a little bit of that video just so people can, can get a sense? If you have it there. Yeah. Yeah. Evelyn y Gerardo impulsan a la fresca ciudad de Berlín en Usulután hacia una economía circular basada en Bitcoin. En tres meses han logrado que al menos 30 negocios se sumen a la iniciativa. Entendemos nosotros que sea con el gobierno no, quien mueve la, eh, la adopción de Bitcoin va a ser los comerciantes, la gente común. Entonces sería bueno porque la adopción so, sería más rápida. So for those of you that are, uh, are just listening, this is a podcast, not seeing the video. We're, we're watching some video right now of Berlin and, and the number of stores that, that are starting to accept Bitcoin. is just beautiful scenery. The, it's coffee country. Um, cool, kind of cloudy, makes you want to have a nice cup of coffee or hot chocolate. So, I've got to imagine coming from San Miguel, like this feels not just the Bitcoin part, but, but also just being able to live in this environment is probably something that, that's pretty, like just enjoyable. Yeah, the weather is it's, it's, it's great. A lot of rain uh, this past couple of months, but, but it's, it's great that the weather is, is good there in, in, in Berlin. A lot of people coming from San Miguel and from those hot places in the eastern side of the country to spend the weekend there in, in Berlin and Alegria and, and the mountain. Because uh, it's, it's really nice weather. Well, I think there's going to be, I, I really do see there being an influx of foreign Bitcoiners that, that come in because, you know, for certain people, they want to be at the beach. If you like to surf or if you're really a beach person, then a place like El Zante is great. But even me as a surfer, I get kind of tired of the, the heat and, you know, Berlin is just so, looks like it's so picturesque in the weather. I imagine you don't need air conditioning or mm -hmm. heating. And so just the cost of living is a lot lower also. Uh, so I could imagine because we get those questions all the time and people come and they're like, oh, I'm not really a beach person and that they don't really want to live in San Salvador either, but they want to be around other Bitcoiners. So now there's this mountain town option for Bitcoiners to kind of congregate. Yes. Uh, Berlin is not that uh, cold either. We, we, in meters, well, we, we, we in Salvadorians speak in meters, so it's about a thousand meters high, the, the, the lowest point. There, if you if you start climbing the mountains, it's about uh, so the actual town there. part is about a thousand meters. Yeah, about a thousand meters. Yes, so it's and, a little bit higher than San Salvador. Yes, yeah, higher than San Salvador. El Salvador in general is a it's a warm country, and these mountains they have nice weather. So yeah, no, Berlin yeah. has that. So that no heat, weather. no air conditioning, yeah, not yeah. even a fan. 
not even a fan. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. How about mosquitoes? Less, it's, le it's less humid there. Less humid there. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do they grow anything other than coffee there? Is there cacao? Cacao. Cacao. Cacao and coffee. Is there much? like vegetables or other stuff grown there. I noticed in like some of the real high parts of El Salvador, they'll, mm. they'll grow strawberries or other stuff like that. Is it is it mostly just still coffee there? Coffee, beans, um, and like it varies depending on, on the season, let's say. So, and um, there is actually like um, organic market that happens every other week, every two weeks. Okay. So where where so people, farmers bring in farmers stuff. Farmers bring yeah. their stuff. And are any of them accepting Bitcoin? Uh, I at the moment there's none. Uh, but there's one that was able to download the wallet. So yes. we're, you're working we're getting on it. there. You're working. Yes. On it. <laughs> yes. So this is your guys. Uh, I love I love your guys logo that you designed, especially the the coffee bean that's part of the, <laughs> the Berlin there. Um. So, did, yeah. did you guys design this? Yeah, yes. we both did it. Nice. Yes. Yeah. It took a while, and that, that's the last, like the last version. There were like different <laughs> versions of it. Yeah. Yeah, that basically represents Berlin because it's it's the colors of uh, the flag of Berlin, which is the German, which is the German, German yeah. flag because it was founded by a German named Seraphim Brennan. In you, 1885. Are there still people of German heritage like living in the region or yeah, they I'm sure all left? Yeah, I'm sure there's blood still around, but there's... no, no, the names. Does Bernie... anybody speak German in town? No. 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 I, not that we know. No, they, they, they are Salvadorians, full Salvadorians there. But... <laughs> but but you see like that some of the German like heritage. Heritage. Yes, yes. and the, still the culture. They kept the flag. The colors there in Berlin, those are not the German colors. Those are the Berlin colors. And uh, the uh, the shield of, this, of the city still have the birds, just as, like in Berlin. Apparently, until a few years ago, you can see an asbestic in, in the church clock there <laughs> as well. And they removed that. But yeah, and, and, and the structure, the there was a lot of, uh, there's still some German culture there. Some of it was uh, ruined by the war. Um, but, but still, there's still a lot of uh, the German culture there. And people just embrace the colors, embrace the culture. They are just proud of being from Berlin. So they see this as a possibility to increase tourism, to kind of set them apart from everybody else and yeah. put themselves on the map. Definitely. Yes. So yes. we saw a lot of that when we were talking to people. Like There was a lot of energy there because they are not happy with the local government. They were not happy with the situation when it comes to tourism. Uh, garbage and all the stuff, problems from uh, different cities, not only in Berlin, but, but, but El Salvador and in different cities. And they were like, we need to do something. But they were just waiting for something to be done. And, well, the idea is let's do something ourselves. Why wait for the government? Why wait for somebody else to come and do something here? Let's do it ourselves. And that's why we have been doing other things but Bitcoin there like social work, cleaning campaigns, painting campaigns. And people is just happy to be on board with that and, and be, be part of it because they just want to see something change here in Berlin. I remember by reading the, the white paper uh, from, from Bitcoin Beach, something that said there that um, Agua Fria needs a rebranding and, and Bitcoin Beach was a great way to go. And I think Nayib Bukele did that as well with El Salvador. Of course, it's, it's not only about changing the name, but it, there's some work on it. And for example, Bukele said the same thing about El Salvador is not anymore the gang country now, it's the Bitcoin country. And of course, there's work put in there. So I think Berlin also can use a little bit of that. Not changing the name of Berlin, because Berlin's a great name. Uh, it's just, it has a great, uh, you know, in general, Berlin is great, but I mean, plus, I mean, you look at the shirt you're wearing there. You've got <laughs> yeah. you got the Bitcoin B as part of it. I mean, that yeah, yeah. Get, it, it's like it's, it was born it was made for to, that. Yeah. Yeah. So now, but we are trying at least. I'm trying to be careful when when I, when we said the Bitcoin City of El Salvador because that's a big title, and 
we said a lot <laughs> within Berlin to the locals so they can get motivated. And we are like, we need to work towards this, this idea and, and we really need to earn that title. But from the outside, we know that that's going to be huge. It's huge and, 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 and it calls a lot of um, expectations and attention. And we don't think um, that we should say it. Maybe somebody else can say it, right? But not <laughs> yeah. ourselves. We'll say. Yeah, we'll yeah, say. Yeah. The, Bi the Bitcoin city. Yeah. <laughs> Berlin is the Bitcoin city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, but you for, heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> but for locals, it's working. The uh, this idea of becoming the Bitcoin city. Let's 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 create the Bitcoin city here in, in Berlin. Why wait? Why wait? Somebody else to do it. Let's do it here. And they are excited about it. The, the idea. So, do you think it's been easier or harder for you guys as as not being from there coming in and and pushing this? Has that made it easier or harder in the beginning i think it was it was hard because nobody knew who we are mm -hmm. or who we were and we were going who are these to, crazy people yes, yeah what are, what are they selling <laughs> so we were we were going to the stores in the beginning because we were newbies on that so we were going to the stores and we were like hi we are evelyn and gerardo and blah 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 and and they were like staring at us and and like <laughs> Why are you selling? <laughs> so then we, you know, within uh, the experience that we were getting, we, we were changing like the tactic, how to approach the businesses and this and that. And then uh, we soon found ourselves that um, there were like better ways to approach people. And so then. So, uh, so give me, give us an example of how, how you did it initially versus what you found works better. Yeah, at the beginning, we were like, uh, we would like to teach you how to use Bitcoin. Have you used Bitcoin before and this and that? And people is usually busy when, when, when we get to, to the business. It's just like, I have five minutes, 10 minutes. And from zero, from, from a bad experience from Bitcoin, you know, most of the people that use Bitcoin here in El Salvador, they use the first thing, they, 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 the first contact with Bitcoin is with the Chivo wallet. And they had a bad experience. And we were trying to bring them from that to use Bitcoin, it's really difficult in doing it in a short period of time. So then we changed the expertise. We were like, we are customers. So <laughs> treat us nice, okay? Because we are, we're, we're spending money here. And then as they were seeing us as customers, then we were like starting to talk to them about Bitcoin. And it worked. And like I was telling you, that was just the beginning, but we soon found some um, locals joining us in this, you know? idea of, of, of onboarding businesses and it was easier from there yeah were, were there people using were there many people using bitcoin uh, prior were, to this they were using Chivo wallet which is not the same yeah um, and some of them and then we need to teach them how to use the lightning uh, network in the Chivo wallet which is a headache for some people and then trying to let them know or, or teach them that there's something else besides Chivo Wallet if you're trying to use Bitcoin. Some of the people, they were even thinking that Nayib Bukele was the one creating Bitcoin and that Chivo and Bitcoin is the same. And I got problems with Bitcoin. I got my identity stolen from the Chivo Wallet. So Bitcoin doesn't work. So there was a lot of that. I'm sure there's a lot of that going on in El Salvador, but um, it's a small town. That's one of the reasons why we choose Berlin. Small city, a small place, small community. People talk. So as we are spreading the word of Bitcoin, this uh, is, is getting easier now. Now we even have businesses looking for us so we can go and teach them about Bitcoin because the business next to them is selling more. They are going, they're seeing some um, tourists going there. So I want I want the tourists here too. So now, that, now it's easier. That is the best way. That's what we saw in, <laughs> in here in El Zante was for the first initial businesses, we had to go and try yeah. to convince them. But after that, they started coming to us because they're like, hey, how come they have more customers than they used to? Yeah. What's, so, yeah. yeah. And within time, we have been improving that tactics. Yeah. Because <laughs> right now the, the group is bigger. So maybe we, we go to a place. Hey, do you accept Bitcoin? No, then, oh, okay, then we just leave. Yeah. And then... There's somebody else, then maybe the next day or the same day later. Hey, do you accept Bitcoin? No, okay, then they yeah. just turn in yeah. and they go. There are some businesses so, that we have even taken personal, like, 
I'm not a Southern Bitcoin, so every day we go and and we send <laughs> part of the team go in that place and ask them if they accept Bitcoin. So to, we know they don't accept yeah. Bitcoin. <laughs> but but that that works. I mean, I have yes. a I have a business in in the U.S. and just as an example, like we had this, you know, cash or the credit card system was older, and I didn't really want to update it, but it didn't work with Apple Pay, and so mm. I was like, no, I'm not gonna. And then everybody's asking. I pay, and then they would leave because that was all they had. And so I was like, okay, I guess I got to figure out how Apple Pay works and how we can integrate it with the system. So I just on a practical level, that yes. works for businesses. If they see that they're losing customers and they hear people every day asking, mm -hmm. then it makes it worth their while to explore yes. it. So I, I love the way you guys are doing it. Yeah. We're, st we're, we're thinking a different tactic now that the, big, the, the group is big, like, 10, 15 people like go in a group to those places that don't accept Bitcoin. And if they say no, we just turn around. So they are like losing a business of 10, 15 people. So we'll let you know how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, because the business owners, they're, they're busy. They have no. all these other things to worry about. And so a lot of times, you know, if what they're doing works for them, but if they start to realize, okay, this isn't working anymore because mm -hmm. I'm losing customers, that, you know, that's a little incentive they need to, to get them to, to look into it. And then once they start using it, most of them realize, okay, this yes. provides all these additional benefits versus yes. cash or credit cards or those things. So Yeah. Um, and then I love, I think we can get to the pictures of the, the park. Well, well, let me walk through. I don't want to rush through them there. So, so that's, that's you onboarding somebody, I'm assuming? Yeah, those were like the first businesses that we were onboarding. Okay. And um, that's Doña Irma. She is part of our team now. Uh, uh, she's a really active member of our team, really? doing a lot of a lot of work with us. Yes, and she's involved in everything, Every not activity. just I mean talking to businesses. She's actually painting. She's cleaning. She's like yeah. she has so much energy. How, how old is she? I'm not sure. Yeah, we haven't asked. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't asked that question. So that's Peewee, another one from our team and uh, his wife. First time we met them. And okay. they have a little store there. Yes, they do. They, they print shirts and, and he's been in. in they customize um, yeah. anything, basically. Okay. In the farmer's market, he's been in the farmer's They market. have been in the farmer's market and uh, now they are also helping to onboard businesses. So they, they go as a couple and, and like they are doing teamwork on board more businesses did they make well. this shirt or uh, yeah they actually, actually they are the ones who did it okay so they have like a print shop that they can do mm -hmm. all that stuff yeah great uh that's our first meeting trying to convince people to um follow us in this idea of creating the bitcoin city and uh, there were a lot of people from there that that stuck be with there doña irma is there uh freddy is there and they are now part of the bitcoin berlin team so yeah for first we were like scared to talk yeah. to people there. We, we didn't have a place so the owner of the place who was recently on board to bitcoin uh -huh. he set up the place for us so that's a restaurant but okay. he, he set up the place for us to have that meeting to to be able to talk to more people perfect uh, cleaning campaigns, that's part of the uh, people that were helping us on uh, cleaning the central uh, square. And then painting it and trying to improve the city pretty much. So, yes. And this is the central square where people yes. hang out. Yes. So that's another, you know, Irma. <laughs> you can see her there and yeah. she's like really active. One of the proudest uh, citizens from Berlin. Uh, Don Julio and Edwin, he's another. Um, Another one that has been working with us, that's Evelyn there, putting the uh, Berlin colors in the uh, Central Park there of Berlin. So more of the same. Um, I think that's the video we watched yeah. earlier. Yeah. That's Xavi. Xavi, he has a nursery plant. We've been planting. He donated some plants there. And we were we post this picture I, I don't know if it was this picture or another picture in in twitter and people was like how can i don donate uh, to so you can plant more plants as he was donating them so you had bitcoiners around the world donating, donating. To, yes to it was it was yeah it was magical because uh 
the local people, they were like amazed how uh, they could get They're like, it's just from, showing up in my account. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, hey, I got another one. We got another tree. We got another tree. So, and, and everybody was really excited because people from all over the world were selecting the trees from the pictures that we uploaded. And they were saying, hey, I want this, I want this. And, yeah. and you know, that, that was really amazing. That. Yeah, that was uh, one of our classes, Bitcoin classes we were giving to entrepreneurs and talking to them about the crazy idea of becoming this Bitcoin city in Berlin. I had a dollar in my hand there telling them how that's not money. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Charlie, Charlie, it's one of the uh, Bitcoiners living now there in Berlin. He's been like really active with the, uh, with the, with the whole project. And he's just, people love him around Berlin, you know. You don't, you don't have to talk good about him just because he's sitting here in the studio. Yeah, so. <laughs> so he's here. <laughs> no, but it's true. He's, uh, he, since the first time he came to Berlin, I remember he arrived next day. He was in one of our meetings and he was already taking responsibilities and, and, and being and, and taking an action, which we love about the people that has come to Berlin to live there. A but, but do you understand his Spanish Spanish? No, he, he has a really real <laughs> Spanish. Now we're, we're teaching him how to speak Salvadorian, Salvadorian Spanish, style. proper Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because um, we want to leave to Berlin before Charlie, but now everybody knows Charlie <laughs> and they are like, hey, Charlie, and we are like there and <laughs> it's like they know yeah. Charlie and they don't know us. <laughs> yeah, but it's great because uh, it helps because it's, it, it, it's, it's like a statement. We are bringing Bitcoiners here and he's blonde so he's not a <laughs> that <Spanish>. helps <laughs> so people start talking in but English people gotta be confused when he speaks Spanish yes, to them. yes. Like, that's true just yeah. rattling yeah. off like uh. so we have been doing different things uh, there in Berlin like giving uh, tourists uh, information to tourists that go there to Berlin and also giving Bitcoin classes there in the park that's the the, the central mm -hmm. park of Berlin what we were trying to do is to promote the businesses that were already except in Bitcoin. So the other businesses, you know, yeah. the, the competition. So, hey, why don't you promote my business? And then we were like, if you don't accept Bitcoin, we cannot promote you. Yeah. So. Uh, same, same uh, place, giving Bitcoin classes. We had a Bitcoin ATM there on, on that table. It's that is the, uh, the K1 ATM. Yes. Yeah. We had, um, James, Nikki, and Jane from yeah, yes, see, they're in, there. yes, which they are now living there in Berlin, which is amazing. And yeah, we were just teaching locals there how to use the uh, the uh, the uh, the <laughs> Bitcoin <laughs> ATM and the and, and teach them pretty much about Bitcoin. Yes, making sales since we needed money to get some paint to keep painting the uh, city. We were selling this. Uh, baking cells, uh, Evelyn did those and with Patty. No, yes. those look very good. Yes. Evelyn with Don Julio selling more uh, the, 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 the baking stuff with did and going around the city. I, I love that you're in a dessert shop selling them your desserts. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obviously I was telling them, Hey, this is delicious. <laughs> Yeah, the Julio. So that that was uh, one um, time that we sold out. I think it was like the first time. So we were really happy because we paid like a hundred canoas, and then we suddenly sold out. That's amazing. Yeah, more of the more of the same. We selling canoas to citizens in Berlin. So what has been the most unexpected challenge that you guys have faced? in this that you weren't really expecting that you found has been really hard so the we we have been in onboarding businesses but we are realistic and we know that that's not just it you need to give some maintenance to those businesses you need some bitcoin injection you need injection of bitcoin there berlin it's in a mountain there nice place but it's not that reachable. It's, it's like two, two hours and a half from uh, San Salvador. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, if you go from El Sante, it will be almost three hours, depending on traffic. So that uh, getting people or, or getting Bitcoin injected there, we know that that's our challenge, uh, and we are working towards that. Just we we get paid and we get paid in, in fiat. We just go to the Chivo Cajero and make that Bitcoin, and so we can start spending the Bitcoin in within the city. We know now. Is, is there a Chivo uh, ATM in yeah. in Berlin? Yes, oh, there is. There's, okay. there's one there. And there's now a lot of uh, Bitcoiners there. That's part of our team there, Bitcoin Berlin team. And they are all going to the stores spending Bitcoin. So we know that there's some Bitcoin around Berlin now. We're trying to make as many transactions as possible. If they are keeping their Bitcoin, I mean, we just tell them, if you're keeping your Bitcoin, just keep it, that's fine. But if, you are, if you're planning to spend your Bitcoin, don't go to the ATM and make it, uh, make it cash, make, make it fiat. Just spend yeah. the Bitcoin within the town. Yeah. That's yeah. Sonia Irma. Sonia Irma, yeah. Man. Yeah, yeah. Diana is yeah, everywhere. She's all she's, huge. She has. I, I need whatever, whatever she's eating. I need to start eating. That. <laughs> That's why everybody says that. <laughs> she's really active in the community. Oh, I, I can yeah. tell. Yes. So that's been the biggest challenge is just, and then that makes sense. It's, it's yes. it is, it is kind of a, yeah. a far place. I know for the project at La Paria, the island, that's the challenge there too, is yes. it's a little more difficult to get to. Um, but I, I think that you guys are going to see a continued movement of specifically of, of foreign Bitcoiners that are looking to come in. And I think that will help drive local adoption as they're spending money in the stores because I, people are always asking, you know, where should I move to? Mm -hmm. And for, for a lot of them, El Zante is not a great fit. Like it, El Zante is kind mm -hmm. of expensive for a lot of people. Um, and it's also warm all the time. So a lot of them want to live in a place mm -hmm. like that. They want to live in a place where they can grow their own food on some land. They, they want to have animals. They want, and they just want the cooler temperature. So I could see this becoming like really a magnet for people, which obviously yeah. is their spending into the economy that, yeah. that drives things. Yes, so. we, we knew that some of that was happening. We we didn't knew that it was going. It was happening so fast because now in Berlin there's a community of Bitcoiners living there. There's about eight, then mm -hmm. if you can call that well, with within the locals and now the whole group because they are fully integrated with with, with the whole group. Um, there's like eight ten expats living there in Berlin, permanently living there in Berlin, and it's great because they are there to help. They are there to be involved in the project. I there's Salva, Salva Nakamoto, you can see it on, on Twitter. He's very active when, when it comes to promoting Berlin. He he said something that I really like because it's true. He he was uh, he was telling us how he was living in Mexico for, for a while and how there was a lot of uh, people from Europe, uh, United States and Canada living there in Mexico too. And that there was a different um Different people living there than the the, the the people that comes the expats that comes to El Salvador because they are Bitcoiners. The uh, expats living in Mexico, they were there to, you know, vacation, party, and they were not there to do that much. While the people coming here to El Salvador and are Bitcoiners, they are here to be part of it. To, yeah, to, to, they want to participate. A lot of times. Yes. Yes. In Mexico, you see the expats kind of separate themselves from the local yes. population. I feel like the Bitcoiners that come in, they yes. want to integrate themselves yes. in what's happening here. And they want to build, yeah. help yeah. to create a, a better country. And yeah, we, we get a lot of that in Berlin. It's great now because now we have an amazing team, a lot of talent there in, in, in the people that is working there in Berlin. So we're just really lucky that we found uh, ourselves now in, in this project. So what are things that people can do to, to help if they're not in El Salvador? And then for people that are looking, you know, to, to relocate and want to, can they contact you guys yeah. and, uh, you'll, you'll help, help them, uh, kind of yes. go Con through things or contact, contact the, uh, Bitcoin Berlin, uh, Twitter page, contact, uh, Charlie's, uh, Twitter page. So, so you can, you can hear. Well, from, I already from told everybody yeah. that they could stay at Charlie's house. That, yes. You know, that if yeah. they show up, he'll house yeah. them all. So, 
So yeah, no, so you can hear from, from firsthand what's from Berlin, don't, don't, don't take or worth, uh, start asking around, visit Berlin, go there and see if uh, you like it and participate, go spend some Saturday in Berlin. So yes. And you guys are, there's an event, right? In, in the end of yes. October. Oh yes, we have uh, the Berlin birthday. So we are having this Bitcoin Berlin festival, which is on the 28th and the 29th of October. So everybody is invited if they want to come. It's going to be great. And uh, the best part is that you can spend Bitcoin in almost all of the, the stores there. Is there going to be any type of like vans or buses coming from anywhere? Yeah, or? from uh, San Salvador and El Sante, we expect to have buses going to Berlin. Uh, it's going to be a two days thing because uh, we are planning to, to the buses to go on the 28th. Of which is going to be a Saturday, 28th of October. We are having a Bitcoin meetup uh, uh, during the night. And then in the morning, there's going to be a farmer's market. We're taking the, the, the farmer's market to Berlin. And, and, and that's the one that's usually in El Zante? Yes, it's the okay, same. Awesome. And it's going to, uh, there's going to be a, a whole party in, in the town because it's uh, Berlin's birthday. It actually is the 31st, October 31st, but they are starting on the 29th. So, um, it's going to be uh, a great uh, day to be in Berlin. Yes. So everybody's invited. Everybody's invited. Yes. And come you guys to Berlin. will put out more information on the, the buses. Yes. Uh, we'll, we'll, yes. We'll let you know. Follow us on Twitter at Bitcoin Berlin. And we'll let you know there well, everything about transportation, accommodation, and, and the things that are going to ha be happening on that day. Yes. And then. You guys are speaking at the Adopting Bitcoin conference also, right? Yeah, we're, yeah. we're also doing that. Excited. Um, we are going to, you know, let people know that there's a place, a community adopting Bitcoin and, and there's here in El Salvador, in the mountains of El Salvador and what's happening there. And that's, that's what you're... Uh, well, we, we don't want to spoil. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you thinking of trying to do anything kind of coordinated with that? There's going to be a lot of Bitcoiners in El Salvador, obviously, that, you know, leading up to that. And then a lot of, a lot of times people stay afterwards. So mm. you know, this would be a great time if people are thinking, you know, they want to move to El Salvador. They want to check out different locations. I don't know if you guys have thought about that, but it would be a great time to try to get some people down there then also. Yes. Yeah, we know that there's going to be Bitcoiners around before and after uh, adopting Bitcoin. So we are inviting everyone. Go to Berlin. If you want to see Bitcoin adoption, go to Berlin. And if you want to see what we're doing, go to Berlin. If you want to stay in Berlin, go and stay there in Berlin. You are at Charlie's house. Yes, you're at Charlie's house. Yes. yes. <laughs> you, you're, you're, uh, you're one of us. If you are a Bitcoiner and you want to be part of the project, we, we are inviting everyone because just as Charlie was taking responsibility and started um, working with us, if you want to do Bitcoin classes, if you want to help us with social media, if you want to help us on board businesses, anything, if you are here to, to you know, to, to, to build, to, to, to be part of the team, you, you, are, you are already accepted there. You're one of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we'll have to make sure as around the adopting Bitcoin time. Let me know if there's carpools or vans or anybody going out because you know a lot of people won't have their own vehicles but if we can help promote you know if people that have spot in their car that can take yes. we want to make sure we get as many people to to bitcoin city as yeah. uh, <laughs> as, as possible yeah uh anything yeah. else we haven't covered that you think people need to know about no well um again uh, thank you thank you so much for having us this has been great we are really excited about what's happening there in Berlin. Uh, just as uh, many locals there in Berlin are excited about this idea. And I think that we are right now in the right uh, place here in El Salvador, uh, in the right time in, in, in history. Things are happening here. And we're trying to communicate that there in Berlin. And a lot of people have been understanding that. And as we are here in El Salvador and we have this great opportunity, uh, it's, it's now Salvadorians that we need to take a decision if we want to be like viewers of history, or if we want to be part of it.
if we want to be protagonists. And I think that people in Berlin has understood that they need to be protagonists, that we want to be protagonists there. So uh, maybe an invitation for any Salvadorian that is hearing us that we have a great big opportunity happening right now here in El Salvador. Well, definitely, I see tons of Salvadorans coming back from the U.S. and and are making plans, buying properties here. It's that's been really remarkable because five years ago, nobody was even thinking about that. Yeah, yeah that's true. Where can people follow you guys? Twitter. Twitter. What's your Twitter handle? My Twitter it's Eva Lemus. Okay. And that's it. Just and at Eva yeah, Lemus. At Eva Lemus. Okay. Yes. We'll, we'll put that in the show notes and. Yeah, mine is uh, at uh, gr underscore, and then my last name is Linares one. I should make that that easier, you know. <laughs> and yeah, you, you, you never do. think about it when you're making <laughs> yes. your Twitter thing, but it's uh, no. We'll we'll put that in the show notes, and then there's a uh, there is a Bitcoin Berlin one also. Yeah, right? Bitcoin Berlin. You can you can see us there. Uh, is it just Bitcoin Berlin? Bitcoin Berlin. Bitcoin Berlin. Bitcoin Berlin SV. SV, yes, okay. SV as in El Salvador, yes. Okay, so Bitcoin Berlin SV is the Twitter handle to follow, find out everything that's happening. Yes. And then you guys have to make sure that you you ping me when there's announcements so we can repost cool. yes. cool. things and help we will. promote. I mean, people need to know about Bitcoin City, so <laughs> we're, we're gonna yeah. make that happen. Yes, no, it's great what's happening, what's happening in Twitter. We're getting a lot of traction, the traction there in, in, in the Twitter page of Bitcoin Berlin. We might start putting our faces more there because people we're going to, <laughs> we have been talking about it and we're going to the adopting Bitcoin and they're going to see our faces like, who's these people? <laughs> so, yeah. Is the tree campaign still going on? Like, can people uh, uh, still donate to that? Or if they, they want to donate. I mean, well, where do they find? Is there a QR code on the, the Bitcoin? Yeah, we have like a ga geyser as well. Okay, uh, where you can donate. Uh, you guys have a geyser. Geyser, ga yes, okay. yes. You can find us there. So yeah. if they just look for Bitcoin Berlin, yes, and geyser, they can find. Yeah, we need to do more find on the that logo too. There. Yeah. Okay. And the picture of the group that okay. yes. when we started there. So viewers, listeners, do that right now. Go find their their geyser campaign and send them some sats. They're doing some amazing things. Yes. Well, thank you. Well, I think that's a good note to to finish up on. Um, we will definitely have to have you guys back in you know another six nine months, and we can hear all the updates. And yeah, that will be cool. And I yes. think thank it's. Uh, I think you guys you guys are in the exciting time right now. I know it's yes. a ton of work. Yeah. Uh, and people, you can't understand how much work it is unless you're the one actually doing it. But <laughs> You guys are doing something super important, and this is the it's an exciting time to be part of it. And that's what I was telling Charlie. I'm like, I'm kind of jealous. Like, you guys are in that time where everything's like still new and fresh and exciting. So yes, enjoy that, but keep keep making it happen. Yeah, yes. no, thank, thank you. you so much. Um, uh, I was just uh, reading because um, we created a strategic plan before mm -hmm. we just put this um, into motion. And because we had like the vision of what we um, thought a circular economy should look like. And also, as Gerardo was mentioning, we also read the white paper. And um, we, I mean, I was just realizing after uh, reading that plan again a couple of days ago that um, it's wonderful to see how things are you know, going so far because uh, a lot of what we put into paper, it's a reality now. And what we thought it will take like a lot of time, it's it's been moving fast. Yeah. So yeah, you guys have made a mark remarkable progress in a very short amount of yes. time. Yeah, I think it's too early to start looking back. I think we're looking forward, things are happening, like, like you said, living live the moment, but, but, but still working. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the moment we start looking back, what we have done is like, <laughs> and we're just like five months into the project, so we're still a lot to, to, to do. No, but it's to, good sometimes yeah, yeah. to check and just yes, be like, yes, wow, yes. we, yeah, we yeah. said we were gonna do this and we're actually doing it. Yes, yes and we always say like, um, we still have a lot to do, because, uh, you know, I think it, it's, it's an ongoing project for, yeah. Yeah. for a long time. 
Yeah. Yes, great. Yeah, I just want to say thank you to the whole team in Berlin. Um, Charlie, Salva, and Nikki, and James, and Robert, and all of the people that are going there to Berlin, and also Patty, and I, I just, well, everybody, everybody. really, thank you, because everything is being possible because of the team there in Berlin. They are working really hard to, to make this happen. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you. Well, thanks.